Cellular stress is when an individual cell is placed in an inhospitable environment or asked to do something that it currently can't do. This causes the cell to either die or adapt to the new situation, so it can better handle what's going on. When there's an increase in cell stress, cells can often meet this new level of demand by going through hypertrophy or hyperplasia, which I'll talk about more in a second. However, if the cell cannot meet the new level of demand it will undergo cell injury. If the cell injury is reversible, you're going to see the hallmark of cellular swelling, and if it's irreversible, you're going to have cell death via apoptosis and necrosis. Hypertrophy is going to be an increase in cell size, which is usually accompanied by increase in overall size of the organ, because you are having most of the cells in the organ increase in size. Examples would include muscles getting bigger due to weight training, or the heart wall thickening, due to having to work harder in a patient with hypertension. Hyperplasia is an increase in the number of cells. So the cells in the organ is going to undergo mitosis and replicate to give you multiple daughter cells. This can also present as an organ increasing in size overall. An example would be hyperplasia of the adrenal cortex in Cushing's disease in order to be able to produce more cortisol. It should be noted that the central nervous system and muscle which includes the heart, cannot undergo hyperplasia, so when these tissues are placed under increased cell stress, they can only undergo hypertrophy. They cannot undergo hyperplasia, this is because these tissues are permanent tissues that are stuck in the G0 phase. They cannot undergo mitosis. Atrophy, is when there's a decrease in cell stress and you have a decreased number of cells, and decrease in cell size via apoptosis mainly, and also shrinking of different organelles in the cell through things like lysosomal degradation. An example of this would be a person who wears a cast for a really long time, and doesn't use certain muscles, and those muscles are going to atrophy and shrink over time. A decrease in cell stress leads the atrophy which can be reversible, increase in cell size or irreversible apoptosis or cell death. Given the situation you actually want cell death because you don't need all those extra cells, and providing those cells with nutrients and energy is an unnecessary expenditure, if you no longer need the cells, because there's been a decrease in cell stress. Metaplasia is when there's a change in the cell type because the type of cellular stress has changed. It involves the replacement of one cell type with a different cell type, that is better equipped to handle the new kind of stress placed on the tissue. An example would be Barrett's esophagus. In this case GERD leads to stomach acid retrograding up into the esophagus, and as a result, stratified quamous esophageal cells are replaced by goblet cells, which are better able to handle the stomach acid because they can create mucus. Another example, would be the replacement of pseudo-stratified columnar cells in the respiratory system with squamous epithelium, as a result of frequent cigarette smoking. Metaplasia can be physiologic or pathologic, but is not cancerous on its own. However, prolonged metaplasia can turn into dysplasia, which is a precursor to cancers. A change in the type of cellular stress can lead to reversible change which would be metaplasia, and a change in cell type or irreversible change, if these cells cannot undergo metaplasia they could also just die, that is, go through apoptosis or necrosis. That's the end of this video, next video will be a proper introduction to pathology, looking at alteration, dystrophy and the likes. So please remember to like this video, share, and subscribe.